today uh, i wanted to talk on mathematical modeling it's a lecture by me professor k satyanarayana i am from usmania university for some time i was at rajiv gandhi university for knowledge technologies and cvr college of engineering and uh, i'll tell you the importance of mathematical modeling you see you can see cbsc syllabus wherein in 11th or 12th class you have one unit dedicated for mathematical model you can understand what is the importance of this in the due course so let me get into the talk i thank the principal tswrdc kamaradi for inviting me to deliver this talk and this talk is possible because of annapurna who is the head of the department of this institution i thank my esteemed colleague shrimati annapurna in the department of mathematics for extending the invitation acknowledgement i acknowledge this book erwin krizek advanced engineering mathematics 10th edition i have consulted wikipedia with caution i doubly make sure the information that i am using i have used google images and particularly the coronavirus curve number fillet march 25th youtube video and the the youtube link is given here yeah so it tells you get into the lecture what is a mathematical model if you want to solve a problem usually of a physical nature we first have to formulate the problem as a mathematical expression or expressions in terms of various functions equations etc such an expression or expressions is known as a mathematical model of the given problem so in other words a mathematical model is the mathematical formulation of the given problem usually of physical nature what is mathematical modeling the process of setting up a mathematical model for the physical problem solving it mathematically by one of the many available techniques we have different techniques to solve mathematical equations interpret the solution in physical or other terms to see what it means in practice and any implications this entire process is called the mathematical modeling or briefly modeling what are the salient steps you set up the mathematical model for the physical problem you solve it mathematically and you have many methods and techniques to solve solve the equations you interpret the solutions in physical or other terms and this entire process is called mathematical modeling or briefly called modeling let us see its flow chart we have a physical problem what do we do we use the physical laws and mathematical equations and write the mathematical formulation of the problem 
thus we get mathematical model then we solve it how do we solve we have different methods you know you can solve analy analytically you can get exact solution if you are not interested in exact solutions you apply some numerical methods and get approximate solutions and for this you can use matlab mathematica maple or any programming language and get its solution thus we get a mathematical solution then after getting the solution that solution we will interpret a, make a physical interpretation if you are satisfied if it is in good agreement with the reality accept the model otherwise if not in good agreement modify the hypothesis go back and continue the process this entire process is called modeling some models i will tell you a mathematical model could be a system of differential equations such as in population control in population control while modeling the population people use differential equations or a probabilistic model such as in risk management in risk management we will use the probabilities a linear programming model in minimizing environmental damage due to pollutants your model can be anything and many others differential equation as a model many physical concepts such as velocity acceleration or derivatives hence a model is very often an equation containing derivatives of an unknown function such a model is an ordinary differential equation we then want to find solution of the differential equation what is the solution a function that satisfies that differential equation study its properties study the properties of the solution graph the solution find value values of it from the graph interpret in physical terms so that we can understand the behavior of the given physical system models that use differential equations differential equations are used to model physical systems that arise in science engineering and technology like models which describe heat transfer chemical engineering processes electronic circuits with time dependent currents and voltages real world problems involving fluid dynamics control mechanisms in biological systems and engineering systems the dynamics of socio economic structure activities of a biological neuron brain modeling systems such as robot control in robotics automatic process control etc etc all these use differential equations first order differential equations are used as models one you know to get the velocity of a parachutist where you use a first order differential equation m dv by dt is equal to mg minus bv square and it is a non linear differential equation water level h outflowing of water is modeled using this differential equation h prime is equal to minus k times root h minus is because the the level of the water is decreasing 
where we use the second order differential equations as models, you know, displacement y of a vibrating mass on a spring. We use second order differential equations as models in the beats of vibrating system. You can see the differential equation there. Current I in an RLC circuit, a second order differential equation there involving L R C in pendulum, where we measure the angle. The one of the simplest model falling of freely falling of a stone, y double prime is equal to g is equal to constant. You can also use the higher order differential equations like this, where the deformation of a beam, mostly civil engineers will make use of it. And even in the constructions, people use this, this type of thing. And uh, lastly, system of differential equations, not one single differential equation, but a system of differential equations uh, you can use. This is what is called lotka Volterra predatory prey model. This is prey which will be killed. These are predators which these eat this prey. And now suppose predators are more, preys will be, place will be extinct out of, out of the nature. Then predators will find alternate methods to find their food. If the predators are not there, preys are many, then there will be an imbalance in the environment. And such a system is called predatory prey model, which uses a two differential equations, two y1, y2 differential equations. And uh, such system of differential equations are used in predatory prey models by Lotka, was a US mathematician, physical chemist, a statistician, famous for his work in population dynamics for energetics. Oltera was an Italian mathematician, physicist, known for his contributions to mathematical biology. What are the uses of mathematical modeling? Mathematical modeling solves some of the real world problems and is widely used to increase and modeling is, is widely used due to increasing computation power because we are getting very powerful computers and we are also getting computing methods. It is used to handle large scale complicated problems like uh, weather forecasting. The following are some areas where modeling is used. First, we talk about COVID-19. COVID-19, if there is time, I will touch this and show you how to model this COVID-19. Space technology, aerospace science, climate modeling, combat and war related problems in defense, population dynamics, water resources, drug design, material research, manufacturing and design, seismology, it's, a, it's a one of the most important area, Econ economics, environment, medicine, biology, etc. So you can see mathematical modeling is everywhere. And that is why this lesson I am teaching to some of my teachers working there. And this lecture will motivate some of our students who are in BSc there. Steps 
in mathematical modeling, let me once again reiterate what are the steps. The first step is get the model. First, formulate the problem as mathematical expressions or express, expressions or expressions in terms of variables, functions, etc. That means set up a mathematical model. Second step is solve it. Third step is the interpret. And uh, the fourth step is finally, we may have to make decisions that may be of an industrial nature or recommended for a public policy. What is this last one? Last one. So if, uh, if your model is telling something, then, then bring it to the notice of the concerned people. Suppose you are talking about COVID-19, bring it to the notice of the government. Then make a decision and uh, recommend a public policy for that. Yes, it says, let me get into the talk. First, I talk about the very simplest uh, mathematical model that is the exponential growth model. In 1798, Thomas R. Malthus, who is an economist in the field of demography, he proposed a mathematical model of the population growth. Here population means the population of bacteria, population of the plants. It can be any population. He proposed by the assumption that the population grows at a rate proportional to the sign of the population. So his assumption is the population grows at a rate proportional to the size of the population. This assumption he made after several observations. This is a reasonable assumption for a population of bacteria or animal under ideal conditions. What are the ideal conditions? Unlimited environment adequate nutrition, there is no depth of nutrition, absence of predators, nothing to worry about that you will be killed, there are no predators, and a lot of immunity from diseases. So if you have immunity for diseases, you have adequate nutrition, you have unlimited environment, predators are not there, then you will grow like anything. So let us see. problem. It's model. What is the problem? The population grows at a rate proportional to the size of the population. First step, you set up the mathematical model. Let P of T be the population at the time T. Then your law says dP by dt is proportional to P. That will be dP by dt is equal to beta times P where beta is the constant of proportionality, where beta greater than zero. Why? Because the population is growing. And you have an initial condition, population when time t naught is p naught. When t is equal to t naught, the initial time, the initial value is p at t naught is equal to p naught. This is the mathematical model. dP by dt is equal to beta p, where beta greater than zero, p at t naught is equal to p naught. Solution. We have our initial value problem. What is that I will do? I will separate the variables and then integrate to get the solution. So I have separated dp by p is equal to beta dt. I have separated the variables, integrated both sides from initial to final. Integral p naught to pt dp by p is equal to beta times a constant. Integral t is equal to 0 to t dt. And integral of dp by p log pt initial p naught to final p of t beta t 
from t is equal zero to t. So final minus initial ln of p t minus ln of p naught is equal to beta or t because the lower is t is equal to zero. Ln of a minus ln of b is ln of a by b. Ln of p t by p naught is equal to beta or t. Remove the logarithm. P of p p of t by p naught is equal to e power beta or t. Push this p naught to the other side. P of t is equal to p naught into e to the power of beta t. So I have solved, and I got the solution. I got the solution. So let's go to the third step. Interpret the result, and I have the solution. What happens as t tends to infinity? T tends to infinity. E to the power of beta t, where beta is greater than zero, tends to infinity. Thus, p of t tends to infinity as t tends to infinity. So that means the population grows enormously. Graph of the particular solution. This is the particular solution. P of t is equal to p naught into e to the power of beta. Graph of the particular solution of particular solution of this initial value problem. For beta value zero point two, and for various values of the initial p naught are shown in the picture in the graph. This is time on x-axis, population p of t on the y-axis. Y-axis. Beta is zero point two. I should get only one curve, but I got many curves. Why? Because I have changed p naught. These p naughts I have changed. For various changes of p naught, these are the these are the exponential curves. So p of t grows exponentially, and that this is an exponential growth. Is an exponential growth. Remark. In reality, this model is unrealistic. Why? Because environment environments impose limitations to population growth. Why? Because There will be deaths. There will be scarcity of food. There will be restriction in the environment. Several other things. Several other things. Therefore, this may be. This looks like a, a, an unrealistic model to apply to the human population or a plant population. You can use for bacteria. For bacteria, you can use. But otherwise, for others, it is not. And therefore. we will revise this to suit to the human population or plant population for any other population for that here is the modification this is called logistic equation logistic equation the differential equation dp by dt is equal to kp into m minus p equation 1 so what is that you are doing dp by dt the rate of growth of the population is proportional to population present and m minus p that means uh, your population will not exceed a level that is m that is m yeah this is this is true this is true take the human population human population as t tends to infinity is not infinity it will be some fixed quantity Fixed quantity. It will not. It will not. Uh, it will not be overflowing. Yum. Yum is the uh, sustainable constant. So is known as the logistic equation for the population growth given by Verhelst. Verhelst is the is the man who gave this, and this is Verhelst equation. The logistic equation is often used to model a population that inhabits an environment with the carrying capacity m. What do you mean by carrying capacity m? M is the ma maximum population that this environment can sustain on long term basis in terms of the maximum available food, for instance, or this environment, for instance, or or You know diseases, 
something like that. So therefore, M is the maximum population. That means the population cannot be cannot exceed M. The that is that this environment can sustain on long term basis. Long term basis. So this is this looks very very realistic, and. Uh, population dynamics this is the equation and uh, the logistic equation plays an important role in a subject called population dynamics what is population dynamics it is a field that models the evolution of population of plants animals or humans over time t over time t but you see solution solving and all that i have not shown but i am shown showing you the the comparison this is the exponential growth in the case of uh, uh, there is no restriction exponential growth but this is also a growth model but there is a carrying capacity m m so the population will not exceed this m will go like this but whereas in this exponential growth it 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 grows it grows as t tends to infinity that's the that's the difference this looks uh, very realistic so when the model is uh, not accepted in reality people will make modifications on that and make a different model and study them yes we will change the situation so let me talk about radioactivity and exponential decay physical problem what is the physical problem given an amount of radioactive substance what radioactive substance will do as time progresses it will decay and uh, how much it is given 0.5 grams find the amount present at any time t make a mathematical modeling that's what it says and we, you have the physical information the physical information is experiments revealed that uh, experiments reveal that at each instant a radioactive substance de decomposes decays at a rate proportional to the amount of substance present so that was there that means the, the the rate of decay is directly proportional to the amount of the substance present it's just like uh, the earlier model only there it was growth here it is decay we'll set up the model set up step 1 denote the amount of the substance still present at any time t by y of t by the physical law divided by dt the rate of change is proportional to the amount present y of t that is divided by dt is directly proportional to y that is divided by dt is equal to minus ky where k is greater than 0 is the constant of proportionality why this minus we have minus k since y of t decreases with the time t the value of k is known from experiments on the radioactive substance set up the mathematical model given y of t is equal to 0.5 when t is equal to 0 this is the initial y of 0 is equal to y not is equal to 0.5 the mathematical model of the problem is dy by dt is equal to minus ky k greater than 0 the initial condition y at 0 y not is equal to 0.5 what is this it is a first order initial value problem solution we have this model separating the variables and integrating we get y not to y integral divided by y is equal to minus k times integral t0 to t dt integrate ln of y from y not to y is equal to minus k t from t not t is equal to 0 to t this will be ln of y minus ln of y not is equal to minus kt The ln of y by y not is equal to minus k t. Remove the logarithm. Y by y not is equal to e power minus k t. This implies y is equal to y not into e to the power of minus k t. 
or the particular solution y not is 0.5 y is equal to 0.5 into e to the power of minus kt step 3 interpretation of the result it starts from the given initial amount 0.5 grams and it decreases with the time t in a process you can also find the half life half life period but as t tends to infinity y of t will be limit t tends to infinity 0.5 times e to the power of minus kt where k is positive e to the power of minus kt as t tends to infinity will be zero so let's look at the graph this is the exponential decay the is an exponential decay radioactivity for k is equal to 1.5 for k is equal to 1.5 and this is from your book irwin that engineering mathematics book this one so this is uh, about the decay it says change the topic and go to newton's law of cooling if a cup of hot coffee is kept in a room then it cools due to the surrounding air temperature if a hot metal rod is immersed in a tub of water then it cools due to the temperature of the surrounding water these two examples prompt us to discuss a law of cooling given by newton and let's see what's the newton's law of cooling newton's law of cooling states that the rate of change of temperature capital t of a hot body is proportional to the difference of the difference between capital t and the surrounding temperature t of s surrounding medium is air or water so that means uh, it says the rate of change of temperature that is d capital t by dt d small t is proportional to the difference capital t and ts what is ts the temperature of the surrounding medium the medium may be air or water that is dt by dt is directly proportional to t minus ts we will make the modeling i will not write the steps because you are now familiar with the modeling steps by the newton's law of cooling d capital t by dt with respect to time is equal to minus k times difference t minus ts where k greater than 0 is the proportionality constant the negative sign is taken since the difference is decreasing right now separate the variables t minus ts push it to the other side 1 by t minus ts dt is equal to minus k times dt variables are separated use the variable separable method to solve this first order differential equation integral dt by t minus ts is equal to minus k integral dt plus ln c where c is the constant of integration integral of dt by t minus t is logarithm ln of t minus ts is equal to minus kt plus ln of c to evaluate this c we'll use the t minus ts by c that means uh, ln c push it to the other side and take out the logarithms t minus ts by c is equal to e to the power of minus kt is equal to t minus ts into c into e to the power of minus kt to evaluate this c we'll use the initial condition let t is equal to t not 
when t is equal to zero. This is this is the initial condition. When time t is equal to zero, the initial temperature is t suffix t naught. So then at t you substitute t naught minus t s c into e to the power of minus k times zero e to the power of minus zero is e to the power of zero is one. Thus you get the value of c. Substitute here. Then you will get therefore t minus t s is equal to c. C is t naught minus t s into e to the power of minus k t. So the ready-made solution I will write down. That is t is equal to t s. Push this minus t s to the other side. Surrounding temperature plus t naught minus t s times e power minus k t where k greater than zero. That is the solution. Particular solution. Is I have taken, agreed. I have solved. I have solved, and uh, the, this is the modeling part of it. I'll stop there, and I will talk about a problem. The problem is, okay. Note, the note is you know, t is equal to t s plus t naught minus t s e power minus k t k greater than zero. Note e to the power of minus k t tends to zero as t tends to infinity. You need not wait t tending to infinity. After sufficiently long time, it will become zero. It will be negligible. It will be negligible, and thereby, after a long time, e to the power of minus k t is negligible, and becomes t is equal to t s. That means it will come to the room temperature. Okay. The surrounding medium, technically. Surrounding medium temperature, technically called ambient temperature. That is, T S is called the ambient temperature. Now, I'll talk about a problem. The problem is made attractive. It is we want to estimate the time of murder. Example: the body of a murder. Victim was discovered at 11:11 p.m. So somebody was murdered at 11 p.m. It is discovered. They they they, they came to know that there the a murder took place, and they discovered at 11. And when he was murdered, we do not know. They discovered at 11, and they have called a detective. The detective took the temperature of the body at 11:30 p.m. That means he arrived at 11:30 p.m. Immediately he took the temperature of the dead body, and it is recorded as 94.6 degrees Fahrenheit. After some other some more investigation, he again took temperature after one hour, when it showed 93.4 degrees Fahrenheit. That means after one hour, he again took the temperature of the body, dead body, and it is noted as ninety-three point four degrees Fahrenheit. And he noticed the, the temperature of the room as seventy degrees Fahrenheit. So that means uh, when he arrived at eleven thirty, he took one one reading. After one hour, he took another reading, and he has taken the reading of the. Room temperature that is surrounding medium T S. This is T S. This is T S. This is the initial initial one. After one hour, this is the thing. But uh, now the question is, estimate the time of the death. And you are given the normal temperature of the human body is ninety eight point six degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So this is the question. I made it attractive instead of. Uh, A cup of tea, coffee, initial, final, so on, so forth. Instead of that, we made it like this. Okay. Solution: the different, the differential equation governing the Newton's law of cooling is this. Why? Because you know, the murder took place, and uh, the body is cooling. Whose solution is t is equal to t s plus t naught minus t s e power minus k t k greater than zero. We have t s is seventy, surrounding medium is seventy degrees. Initial 
T naught is 94.6 degrees Fahrenheit. When T is equal to zero, that T is equal to zero is uh, at 11:30 p.m. At 11:30 p.m. is taken. That is taken as the base time. That is T is equal to zero. Then substitute T is equal to T S 70 plus T naught 94 minus 94.6 minus T S 70 into the power of minus K T. That will be equal to 70. Plus 24.6 into to the power of minus kT. So this is the equation. And again, when t is equal to 60 minutes after one hour, we are measuring the time in minutes. We have t is equal to 93.4. That is the temperature is 93.4. So you substitute here, and t is equal to 60 minutes, and you will get the value of k. So 93.4 is equal to 70 is equal to 24.6 into e to the power of minus 60 k. That is 93.4 minus 70. 23.4 is equal to 24.6 into e to the power of minus 60 k. So I have reverted this. Yeah, I have reverted this. E to the power of 60 k is equal to 24.6 by 23.4. Please note down. I have reverted. And 60 k is equal to take the logarithms on both sides. Logarithm of 24.6 by 23.4. And uh, and uh, what will be the value of k? The value of k will be 1 by 16 into logarithm of 24.6 by 23.4. This is the logarithm to the base e, and uh, and the value we got 0.0003083307. Please note down this value. This value I am going to use in the next slide. So we have this equation. I have already computed k value here. And now we now compute T when this T is equal to 98.6 degrees. What is this 98.6 degrees? This is the this is the temperature of a normal human being in a healthy state. That means uh, we are saying that uh, at the time of the at the time of stabbing, the man is alive and his temperature is 98.6. and we have we want to ask what is that time t when the temperature of the body is 98.6 so that means uh, you it will be you are calculating the time in reverse manner that means you are calculating from 11:30 to backwards backwards therefore the answer expected is negative from 1 we have 98.6 is equal to 70 plus 24.6 e to the power of minus kt And k I know, k I know, I do not know t. So e to the power of minus k t minus k t twenty eight point six by twenty three point four minus k t. So take the logarithms on both sides. Minus k t is equal to ln of twenty eight point six by twenty three point four. What is the time? T is equal to minus one by k ln of twenty eight point six by twenty three point four. K value I know zero point triple zero eight double three five zero seven. Substitute here and I get minus one. 180 minus 75 minutes because my measurement in time is in minutes. In hours, it will be it will be approximately minus three hours. Minus three hours. So what is the therefore the estimated time of death is 11:30 minus three. That is 8:30 p.m. approximately. so that's the solution so this problem tells you that uh, the mat mathematical modeling can be applied even situations like this situations like this so applications are enormous for mathematical modeling it says change the time what's the time now 1207 okay i will swiftly go into the covid mathematical modeling of the covid mathematical modeling of epidemics you may not uh, understand much of the things but you can understand on the whole what's the situation what is the situation so now introduction each year millions of people worldwide die from infectious diseases such as measles malaria tuberculosis hiv and now the corona virus covid 
while there are many complicating factors simple mathematical models can provide much insight into the dynamics of the disease epidemics and help health officials make decisions about public health policy now i will discuss a model famously called sir model it is one of the classical very old still much used which is a deterministic epidemiological model for the local spread of any epidemics a disease in particular even covid 19 also mathematical modeling of infectious diseases models use basic assumptions of collected statistics models will depend upon basic assumptions you know some assumptions they take pravalika please silence basic assumptions we we work on basic assumptions and collected statistics even in covid 19 we there is a lot of data how many are infected or oh, no how many are recovered how many are dead you know how many are acquiring new diseases so on so forth lot of statistics we calculate we we collect and along with the mathematics to find parameters for various infectious diseases and use these parameters to calculate the effect of different interventions like mass vaccination programs the modeling can help decide which interventions to avoid which to make a trial and we can predict future growth of the patterns etc what models will do models try to predict things such as how a disease spreads or the total number of infected the duration of the epidemic to estimate various epidemiological parameters deterministic models when dealing with large populations like in india 135 crores deterministic models compartmental mathematical models are often used the deterministic model individuals in the population are assigned to different subgroups or compartments different compartments each representing a specific stage of the disease the transition rates from one class to another are mathematically expressed as derivatives hence we use differential equations for this model how are diseases modeled in population models simulating disease spread within and among populations such as those used to forecast coronavirus covid-19 outbreak are typically based on the susceptible infectious recovered framework so what are the three compartments susceptible some of them are infectious out of them some of them are recovered framework sir model or compartmental disease model susceptible infectious and recovered or compartments each individual in the total population capital n is assigned to one of the compartments what is the total population capital n but in computing we take this as n as one only one one suppose uh, suppose uh, your total population 135 crores then one will be 135 crores 0.1 will be 1 by 10th of 1 by 135 crores like that so instead of n people take what take it as one so determine dynamics of the sir model susceptibles a infection takes place some of them will get into the another compartment infectives in this some of them are removed actually recovered or some of them are dead then they are removed recovered or removed will include recovered and even the dead people also so 
we must determine the rate at which the susceptible individuals get infected the rate of infection the rate at which the infected individuals recover or die that is the rate of recovery rate of infection rate of recovery these are the things which you have to consider so let's so let's talk about this model sir model who are susceptibles that's the whole population susceptible individuals have no immunity to the disease immunity can come from prior exposure vaccination or mutation that confers resistance so susceptible is the total population in this susceptible there is someone is infected therefore they can become infected susceptible individuals can move into infectious compartment through contact with an infectious person infectious people have the disease and can spread it to the others infectious individuals can move into the recovered compartments by recovering from the illness or if they are dead recovered individual individuals can no longer become infected typically because they have immunity from a prior exposure so you have understood what is sir model we use ordinary differential equations because people can move between compartments from susceptible to infectious infectious to the recovers recovered the number of people in each compartment changes over time t as time t changes s of t changes i of t changes r of t change changes thus mathematics will come into the picture the sir model captures population changes in each compartment with a system of ordinary differential equations to model the progress of the disease the standard sir model can be schematically represented as this susceptible infectious recovered the sir model the sir model consists of a population of size n on which at a time t s of t individuals are susceptible of being infected as a consequence of consequence that i of t individuals are already infected and can transmit or spread the disease to the susceptible population the number of individuals r of t represent those who have recovered from the disease which if lethal also includes death of dead, dead, dead individuals and cannot be reinforced set of differential equations thus the dynamics of the differential equation was introduced in 1927 by kermack and mackendrick they modeled by the set of differential equations the first one is ds by dt the rate of change the rate of the susceptible is minus beta times i of t into s of t what is this that means so ds by dt proportional to itst where beta is the constant and beta is what beta is a portion of s will be infected and thereby s s of t will decrease so how much it will decrease beta times i of t s t so that means ds by dt is decreasing decreasing and di by dt happen what happens from that minus beta i t s t which is decreasing from s yes, will be added to the rate of infectious people di by dt plus beta is equal to beta times i of t s of t there it is reducing that means s is susceptible so reducing and di by dt the infectious is in increasing and from the infectious people a proportion of it a proportion of the infectious will get immunity will be will be minus from that and they will be get into the recovery recovery dr by dt is equal to gamma times it i hope you have understood what is what is what is what is that i am saying from the infectious people a proportion 
a, a, pro, a, a proportion of it that is gamma of it will be recovered and will be minus from di by dt and will be added to dr by dt gamma it that is the model now you see if you take ds by dt plus di by dt plus dr by dt beta itst beta itst cancel gamma it cancel and ds by dt plus di by dt plus dr by dt is equal to zero if you integrate s plus i plus r is the total population yeah that's what you get it in these equations the parameters beta what is this parameter beta called beta is the infection rate and what is this gamma the recovery rate or removal rate of the infectus infectus and uh, beta controls the transition between s and i s and i as in the equation 1 and gamma controls the transition between r and i r and i so what is beta the infection rate the infection rate the transmission rate the infection rate or transmission rate is the effective number of contacts per unit time gamma the recovery rate is taken as the number of recoveries are discharged by the confirmed cases agree okay. so let's see this is the chart this is uh, kermock and mckendrick and uh, susceptible infectious recovered these are the differential equations transition rates are given where s of t is the number of susceptible people at any time t i of t infected people at time t r of t recovered number of recovered people at time t beta a parameter for infectivity gamma a parameter for recovery and uh, schematically it is written like this notes and uh, this i have already talked about that a fraction of this product are the individuals that at time t becomes infected and removed from s which because of the negative sign in equation 1 decreases as time increases from zero as time increases from zero the susceptibles will decrease and uh, and uh, i of t will increase and the dr by dt will also increase on the other hand from the equation 3 the inverse of the parameter gamma gives the measure of the time spent by the individual in the infectious state and uh, what are the dimensions there are no dimensions used s yes, i r n r no dimensions but whereas for beta and gamma the dimensions the, the the dimension is they are measured per day or per week or per month as the case may be as the case may be per day or per week or per month as the case may be now there is a one important thing what you have to note down basic reproduction rate number how many new infectives are caused by a single infective introduced introduced uh, into a population consisting of entirely of susceptible we have from the equation 2 so this equation is beta s minus gamma it if beta s minus gamma is equal to 0 we will get critical points critical points when beta s minus gamma is greater than 0 then di by dt is greater than 0 then i of t increases then we define basic reproduction rate r not is equal to beta s by gamma this is the basic reproduction rate and this uh, and r if r not is greater than 1 it increases and hence the disease will become epidemic while early estimates of covid 19 r not is anywhere between 2 and 3 that means a single person will infect two or three persons Two or three persons, and from among them, again the individuals will infect two or three. Like that, it goes exponentially. That's why we want to break the chain. That's our slogan. What up? What is up with R? One of the most important quantities in disease modeling is R not. Determining R not is a fundamental goal of epidemiologists, like COVID nineteen. 
what makes this quantity so useful the basic reproduction model reproduction number or not is a measure of flow measure of how transferable a disease is or not is a measure of how transferable a disease is it is the rate of rate it is the average number of people that a single infectious person will infect over the course of their infection course of their infection. this quantity determines whether the infection die out or remain constant will spread exponentially as shown now now suppose if r not less than 1 on average an infected person infects less than one person the disease is expected to stop that is stop is expected to stop spreading it will die out it will the disease will die out if r not is exactly equal to 1 that means it infects an infected person infects an average one person the disease spread is stable or it is called endemic and the number of infectious infections is not expected to increase or decrease it will be stable 1 1 1 1 1 it goes on suppose r not is greater than 1 on average an infected person infects more than one person the disease is expected to this disease is expected to spread in the absence of intervention we have an epidemic so one person will give it to two each will give it to two and at the end stage it will be 2 power n it will increase exponentially and hence the it will become epidemic okay now this is last 5 minutes so we will now write this is a, a youtube from the youtube we have taken and uh, here is ben spox this is the man ben spox is explains and he has given a code this is a geogebra code he has given the so called sr modeling being used to predict the spread of coronavirus this is the code he has given n is equal to 1 the total population i start start that is the initial value of the uh, infected uh, is 0.01 because there must be start someone must be yeah, then s start will be s yes, means susceptible start will be 0.9 and from 1 we have taken out the rate of that is uh, removable so the uh, recovers in the beginning it is zero transmission rate is 3.2 recovery rate is 0.3 maximum time is 1 and he has written the code here this is the geogebra code i will show the implementation this is uh, the transition rate a is equal to 2 because uh, every individual will will pass the trans the 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 this is 2 2 and 3 in india recovery rate i have taken 0.3 maximum time is 27.7 i can change it i can change it let's make it uh, 31 days in the month of may let's check Let's check. But 0.3, see, susceptible is in blue. It is falling down as the infection grows. Infected is this. It's coming down. It's like this. Recovered is this. Is this? Now, today's paper says it is 0.8. Recovery rate is 80 percent. What is that you have observed? Recovery curve. Recovery rate. It is increased. and the infection is falling down infection is falling down infection is falling down and that's what our people are talking about uh, flattening the curve flattening the curve if you make if you make infection rate is less let us say let us say to 1 it will be like this but this is this is not at all called as a, a disease the pandemic situation will be will be there if you take suppose you take something like 3 something like 3 something like 3 so the susceptibles falls down and the infection rate ift ift has raised has raised 
as race. This is the implementation part of it. Okay, let me get back to my Okay, now it's only for the teachers, for the students. I hear and I forget. This is for the student. Suppose you go on talking, he listens, he forgets. I see and I believe. Suppose you go on writing and I see, I believe that you can do that. But if I do and I understand, so that means if I do, then I will understand. Therefore, the whole part of mathematics is doing mathematics and understanding and appreciating. This is a famous quotation for Confucius. And all the teachers must follow this. Yes. And the trademark is that uh, you end with a smile. So what's the end with a smile? So oh, here is uh, two people, you know, a square plus b square is equal to c square. Who said this? Pythagoras, E is equal to MC square. Who said this? Einstein. And C square has disappeared. And what the Pythagoras and Einstein are doing? Let's watch. <laughs> C square is mine, C square is mine. And our emoji laughs. That's it. That's the joke of the day. And I hope that I have made you understand what is mathematical modeling. And I've shown you different uh, situations which are you know, at your level of understanding. At the end, I have made an effort for uh, this uh, COVID-19 modeling. And I have also shown that GeoGebra code, how this is done. And not only GeoGebra, you, know, you can use even um, access also. Uh, you can use uh, anything, finite difference method or anything like that. Or you can use a C language, something like that. And I'm sure that uh, this lecture motivates you and uh, for the students, it might have, you know, you, you are, you're enlightened with this lecture. And if that is the case, please send your feedback to this number 9490156677. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Thank you.